Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury. I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the SMK Sintag Air Rifle. This gun is branded as SMK, Sports Marketing. Now SMK are a UK importer and distributor of a wide range of air guns and related accessories, but the guns themselves are made in China. Now I'm not sure about this particular model, but a lot of the guns branded as SMK in the UK are actually um, sold under other names in other countries. So this particular model, the Sintag, is part of the Synergy series. Now I don't know the origin of the name, but I'm going to make the educated guess that Sintag is an amalgamation of synthetic and target. Uh, I don't know when this rifle was first introduced, but at the time of making this video it is a current model. Now SMK market this as a mid-sized rifle for children and adults alike, suitable for target shooting at clubs, back garden plinking and small vermin pest control. So let's take a closer look at the SMK Sintag air rifle. The Sintag is a brake barrel spring piston air rifle. As I've already said, it's a mid-sized rifle at 40 inches or 101.5 centimetres long and weighing 4.6 pounds or just over 2 kilograms. It has a 16.5 inch or 42 centimetre rifled barrel and it's available in both 177 and 22 calibre, uh, this particular one being the 177 version. Now it's advertised as having a plastic shrouded barrel, but essentially it is a completely plastic barrel just with a steel inner sleeve. Now the problem with that is that the main block at the end of the barrel um, being made of plastic is not only not as strong as steel, but is more prone to wear, which could cause the barrel lock up to become loose over time, which will affect accuracy. And interestingly, the barrel locking mechanism is via a spring-loaded ball bearing rather than the conventional barrel catch plunger. It has a black synthetic stock and as you can see it's a skeleton stock with this cutout and SMK advertise it as a shark fin skeleton stock because of the shape of the cutout looking like a shark fin. Now the sections of the stock above and below the cutout do look very thin but it does actually feel strong enough. It doesn't feel like it'd break even if you knocked it about a bit and it also has some strengthening ribs on the inside of the stock. So it has a bulky fore-end section here to get a good grip and with your thumb coming through the stock and the angle of the grip it feels almost like a pistol grip um, so you can get a really nice steady hold of the rifle. Both the pistol grip and the fore-end section have moulded grooves to add grip, which they do, but it's not actually too comfortable to hold that on the underside of the fore-end. Uh, the stock also features a moulded plastic trigger guard and a rubber butt pad, although that does feel quite hard and plasticky. I'd say it's a very modern tactical looking stock, which also helps reduce weight, uh, both of which are probably quite good selling points for an air rifle designed to appeal to younger shooters. I'm now going to remove the stock to have a look at the trigger and safety. The trigger is single stage and non-adjustable and it's just a stamped steel trigger blade with a single spring behind it for tension. Um, there's quite a bit of creep and unfortunately it's quite a horrible clunky creep uh, but when the trigger does break it is crisp enough. Now the rifle features an automatic safety at the end of the main cylinder here which is engaged when the gun is cocked and it is resettable so it can be manually re-engaged. It has a red spot on the top uh, but strangely that's actually to show that the gun is on safe rather than fire. I do think the safety catch being back at the end of the cylinder though is not particularly well placed on this gun because with the skeleton stock, your hand and your thumb are through the trigger, uh, through the stock, sorry, so you can't just slide your thumb up 
you actually have to physically take it out and uh, push the safety catch in which kind of moves your whole hand so it's not particularly conducive to holding the gun steady uh, for accuracy. Um, it also has a safety mechanism to prevent you pulling the trigger whilst the gun is cocked or the barrel is broken. So when the uh, barrel is broken the cocking link slides backwards which releases this plate and that is pulled back under spring tension here and the back of this plate under here slides into this cutout in the trigger which prevents the trigger being pulled whilst the barrel is open. Which you can, hope, which you can see there. With the stock back on let's move on and look at the sights. The Sintag features fibre optic open sights. So the front one is made of plastic and is moulded into the barrel shroud and consists of a red fibre optic bar inside a protective hood with cutouts to allow plenty of light in. The rear sight has two green fibre optic bars to line up with that front red one and is adjustable for elevation using this wheel on the top and windage using this wheel on the side. Now I'm a bit conflicted about the quality of the rear sight. So the main sight base is made of cast metal and it has a metal flat spring inside and the plastic barrel shroud even has metal inserts for this uh, sight to screw into but the rest of the sight is made of very cheap very wobbly plastic and the fiber optic elements don't even sit straight because they're under spring tension from the windage adjustment. Uh, overall the open sights are usable uh, they pick up light quite well but the sight picture isn't fantastic and that is partly because the rear sight not sitting straight. Uh, the rifle does feature an 11mm dovetail rail so you can mount a scope and it even has an arrestor block at the back to stop the scope moving back due to recoil. Looking now at the markings on the top of the main cylinder we have the SMK target logo, SMK Sintarg and Cal 177 4.5mm and then on the right hand side of the gun we have sports marketing Sintarg. Uh, there's no serial number on the gun and all of the markings are just very lightly applied within the finish they're not engraved or stamped or anything. I'm now going to do some shooting and testing of the rifle. I'm first going to test the accuracy and I'm going to fire 10 pellets at one of these 14 centimeter square targets at a distance of around 12 meters and for that I'll be using these 8.1 grain busily practice pellets. Here I have my target, now, all 10 pellets are within this orange three point ring with most of them being grouped a bit tighter than that. Now I'm happy with that accuracy from a plinking rifle with open sights but I do feel that if the sights were slightly better I'm sure the accuracy would be a lot better and mounting a scope will definitely tidy up and shrink that group. So I'm now going to test the power by firing another 10 of those busily practice pellets over the chronograph. Here I have my chronograph test sheet and I've already done all of my calculations. With those 8.1 grain Bisley practice pellets I got an average velocity of 508.84 feet per second with a spread of 25.4 feet per second, the highest being 521.7 feet per second and the lowest being 496.3 feet per second. And using that average of 508.84 feet per second that gives me a power of 4.66 foot pounds. Now SMK advertised this gun as being able to get up to 700 feet per second in 177 and up to 500 feet per second in 22. Now this one therefore is nearly 200 feet per second less than stated but SMK do say up to and I don't know what pellets that's using uh, plus it's a used rifle so I don't think there are any significant power issues with this gun. So there you've seen the SMK Sintarg air rifle. Now I guess it's okay for what it is, uh, it's just not the kind of thing that I would normally go for. Um, 
I've got nothing against it being kind of a Chinese import but I'm just a bit of a traditionalist who doesn't really like modern looking air guns with a load of plastic on them. That being said I think this would be kind of a great first gun for a teenager or something and the modern looking design probably would only add to the appeal for that target audience. Now at the time of making the video the RRP price is £119.95 which I personally think feels a little expensive for what it is but they are readily available new for £100 or so. Uh, I couldn't see any second hand ones at the moment but as and when they come up they're going to be even cheaper than that still. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video, if so be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury and until next time, keep your arms in the air.